Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Do you own a Mac mini and do you only have 256 gigabytes available storage? And is that not enough for you? Well, I ran into this problem because I got a Mac mini as a trade up for some different hardware that I had and it's only got 256 gigabytes of storage, but it has an M1 CPU and it's running great for coding and doing all sorts of tasks, but I need more space. So I found a solution. Instead of soldering something on, you can buy a little hub that will allow you to put in an NVMe and a 2.5 inch SSD. I'm going to show you how, I'm going to show you some speed tests and basically just what kind of upgrade this can do for you. All right, so I got the product right here. Um, basically, it's just a hub. And when you turn it around, you can see that it can take some uh, NVMe and SSD uh, spaces right here. I'm going to go ahead and open it up and we'll take a look at it. All right, so here we have the hub open. You can see that it's the same metal finish as the MacBook um, Mini, uh, Mac Mini or whatever it's called, sorry. And when you turn it around, I already took off the cover that you can see here. This is where we can put in an SSD 2.5 inch and an NVMe drive. This is insanely useful because it also has USB-C and USB 3.0 and SD card readers. The same goes for the front, uh, the back here, sorry. So let's go ahead and put the drives in. I'll just open these up and I'll slide them in. All right, so just like that, we got one terabyte of SSD and one terabyte of NVMe. This is great because I'm gonna use one for time machine backup and I'm gonna use the other for storing video files and coding projects and all sorts of stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and put on this cover, put in the screws, and then we're gonna try to fire it up. All right, so as you can see, the product looks quite nice because it has the same finish and size. You have now got some front IO here in the front of the Mac, which is great. And everything has been plugged in. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and boot it up and see if the drives are visible in the Mac OS. All right, so the Mac is now up and running. We can see a little bit of LED status lights on the dock right here, which is nice. And we got that extended front IO. Um, as we can see here on the Mac, it's now booted up and we can already see that it's trying to initialize two disks or at least saying that they're not initialized. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch over to the uh, computer screen uh, recording and we'll have a look at how we can initialize them and speed test. All right, so switching over to the computer here, uh, in the Mac OS, we can see that we have two pop-up windows right on boot. That's because the disks has not been initialized. So I say we just initialize them. Um, what we are gonna see here is that the disk tool management is gonna pop up and we can see external drives. So as we can see right here, the Kingston SNV2 is the NVMe of one terabyte. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press delete and I'm gonna give it a name, one TB underscore, oops, TB underscore NVMe, just so I know what kind of, um, uh, drive I'm using. I'm going to just use APFS and I'm just going to be using GUID partition and we're going to press delete and it should initialize the disk, delete it and initialize it and then it should actually be use usable for us. So what should happen now is that we should be able to see it in Finder and as we can see it's right here and we should be able to try to uh, just copy over a file and as we can see that's not a problem at all. Um, and we can also just move this to the trash again. So that's all good and nice. And then the ASM disk is the uh, 2.5 inch SSD. I'm also gonna do the same for that. And that's gonna be called Time Machine. Now I'm not gonna be, uh, in this guide, I'm not gonna be adding a Time Machine backup just yet because I just wanna speed test here um, and nothing else. But if you wanna add our Time Machine backup, I'm sure you can find a guide on YouTube on how to do that. Um, but I'm gonna do the same and the same and just press delete. Press OK, and now we have the two disks right here. And as you can see, we can see both disks right here. Now, let's speed test them. Um, as far as I know, the uh, NVMe is supposed to get up to almost 3,500 uh, megabytes or MBs per second. I'm not sure if we will achieve that here, um, but let's just see. I think that's theoretical, theoretical speed and not actual real speed. But what we can search for is black disk Black Magic Disk Speed Test right here. All right, so after opening uh, Black Magic, I'm just gonna speed test the OS drive. It's quite um, slow because it's a single chip NAN. Uh, I think some of the higher end models comes with dual chip NAN, but I think this is single chip. But let's just have a look at what the writing speed is on the standard drive of the machine. So that's 2100 and about 2700 read. Okay, so 
that's fine for testing now. Uh, let's go ahead and test the other NVMe. So let's just stop the test. And then we pick the target drive. That's one terabyte NVMe and press open. And let's see how good we can get. So we're getting about 750 megabyte read. No, write, sorry. And what read are we getting? Uh, about 700 read. Okay, and second test. Just about the same. Okay, so might not be the best numbers out there, but I think there is some um, limitation either in some cables or the dock itself or whatever. I'm not sure, but it's definitely usable for me and it's quite fine. Um, I'm actually not sure entirely what I was expecting, um, but it seems to be good enough. Uh, we can see here that it's not supporting uh, 4K read and write of progress. I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon, so that's fine. Um, so thanks for Black Magic. Now let's test the 2.5 inch SSD. Um, let's select the test drive, uh, time machine, and let's see how much of a difference that is. That's about half the speed, it seems, on write. Okay, 370. And about 300 read okay so i'm completely fine with that um this was just a quick guide to show you how you can easily upgrade your space for the mac mini uh, if you are stuck with a lower uh, space model or if you just need a ton keep in mind you can always just always also buy an nvme usb adapter of some kind uh this was just my solution because it's a desktop pc and it's going to be used like a desktop pc for me um I will leave a link for the product down in the description if you're interested, but for now, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. See you guys.